Welcome to Discrete Math. The starting place for us will be propositional logic. A proposition is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both. We commonly use letters to represent propositional variables. As we get into examining more complex statements, it is much easier to deal with a letter representing a proposition. Next, we'll take a look at examples of propositions. The first one, 1 plus 1 equals 2, is a proposition because it can be evaluated to true or false. This one evaluates to true. Second one, 2 times 2 is equal to 100, also a proposition. However, this time the value is false. The third one, it is 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and as I'm writing this, it is not. So at this point in time, this one evaluates to false. We could letter each of these. We could do something like, say, let P be the 1 plus 1 equals 2. Let Q be equal to the 2 times 2 equals 100. And let R be equal to the sentence, it is 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And those would be examples of lettering our propositions. Definition of negation. Let P be a proposition. The neg negation of P, denoted by the arrow in front of the P, or by the line over the P, is the statement with the opposite truth value of P. In our examples from above, not P is 1 plus 1 is not equal to. The negation of Q is 2 times 2 is not equal to 100. And the negation of R is it is not 90 degrees right now. Truth tables. Truth tables allow us to examine all possible truth value combinations between propositions. The truth table for P and not P would look like this. We'll set up P on the left and not P on the right. Those will be the headers of the table. And then under P, we'll start with the value true. And then since P only has two values, true or false, we'll give it true on the first line, false on the second line. And that's customary for writing out truth tables is to start with your truth values first, and then after your truth values, list your false values. For the negation of P, that's our second column, we'll flip that and we'll start with false and then true. And those are the only possibilities for the uh, negation there, because you've got when P is true, then Q must be false, because it's the opposite truth value. When P is false, then negation of P is true. To connect propositions together, we will use logical operators. The first such operator will be the conjunction operator, AND, represented by the symbol for an AND, which is like a caret symbol. If P and Q are propositions, then the conjunction P and Q is true when P and Q are both true. Otherwise, it is false. We can look at the truth table for this. List proposition P, oops, proposition Q, and then the result of P and Q. And when we list this out, we have four possible combinations. So we'll start with the trues, true, true, then false, false. And we'll match up the possible cues here. We'll go true, false, true, false. And that gives us all four possible combinations. And the truth value for the P and Q column, this is true only when both P and Q are true and all of the others are false. 
because the other three lines have one or the other of them as true, but not both P and Q as true. Disjunction. The disjunction of propositions P and Q, denoted by P or Q, is true when either P or Q is true, and false only when P and Q are false. So let's look at the truth table for this. We we'll have P, Q, and P or Q. And again, there are two variables, so we'll have four possible combinations. We'll fill out our truth table like this. True, true, false, false for P. For Q, it is true, false, true, false. And then the value of P or Q is true when either one of P or Q is true. So the first line, they're both true, it's true. Second line, you have true then false, that is true. False then true is true. And the only time when this is false is when both are false, which is this last line. Let me rewrite those in red. True, 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 and false. The exclusive OR of P and Q, denoted by P XOR Q, is the proposition that is true when exactly one of P or Q is true. Otherwise, it is false. We'll look at the truth table for this. We have P Q and P XOR Q. Set up the truth table. P is true, true, false false, Q is true, false, true, false, giving us all possible combinations there. And then for the XOR, first one is false because uh, they're both true, which violates our rule that exactly one must be true. Second line, we have true then false, exactly one is true, so that's true. Third line, false then true, exactly one is true, therefore true. And the last line is false because both P and Q are false. Conditional. The conditional statement P then Q is the proposition if P then Q. The conditional statement P then Q is false when P is true and Q is false. Otherwise, it is true. Let's look at the truth table for this. We have P, Q, and P then Q. Set up the truth table just the same as we have for other uh, two proposition truth tables. So now when we look at this, the only time that this is false is when P is true and Q is false, and that is this instance, otherwise it's true, which means when P is true and Q is true, it's true. When P is false and Q is true, it's true. When P is false and Q is false, it's true. Biconditional. The biconditional statement, P if and only if Q, is the proposition P if and only if Q. The biconditional statement P if and only if Q is true when P and Q have the same truth value. Otherwise, it is false. Let's look at the truth table. P, Q, and P if and only if Q. This will be set up the same as our other truth uh, tables with uh, two propositions. P is true, true, false false, Q is true, false, true, false. And this is true when P and Q have the same truth value. So when P is true and Q is true, do this in red, P if and only if Q is true. When P is true, Q is false, P if and only if Q is false. When P is false and Q is true, 
this is false, and when P is false and Q is false, those are the same truth values, so this is true.